So in this autotrophic mode of nutrition, plants, they produce molecules like carbohydrates. So do they produce only carbohydrates? No. Along with carbohydrates, they also produce certain substances called as proteins and lipids. These are also useful biochemicals. So other organisms are dependent on plants, heterotrophic mode of nutrition, other animals are dependent on plants for their food. So we get these carbohydrates, proteins and lipids from plants. Plants basically they make carbohydrates, apart from carbohydrates they make proteins and they also even make lipids. So here, if all the organisms are dependent on plants, someday all the plants must be used up. They might be disappeared from the environment. It is not happened so. Because the plants are specially grown for food. By using seeds, new plantation, new crops, we grow plants for the production of food. So every plant, it has the mechanism of converting the simple organic materials into complex materials like carbohydrates, uh, proteins and lipids. So what are the materials that the plant uses? We discussed that uh, carbon dioxide, water and it needs some minerals. So the source of minerals is the soil. So plant, it get the minerals from the soil. Soil supply the minerals. So apart from the soil, the plant, it requires some other materials. It was proven by the experiments conducted by Van Helmont. So he conducted several experiments and he told that plants need something else than the soil. So by that time, by his time, it was not known that plant require carbon dioxide, plant require sunlight, plant require this and that. So people used to believe that Soil is the source of materials to the plant to grow and to produce food. But it was not a fact. It was disproved by Van Helmont by his experiments. He showed that along with the soil, some other materials are used by the plants to prepare the food materials. Okay, here we understood that the plants are the producers. They are the chief producers of food for all the other organisms on this planet. So how they are able to make the food? There is a mechanism which is called as photosynthesis. Two hundred years ago, this mechanism, the details about this mechanism was not known to the people. So they were having different ideas like plants, they use only the soil to make the food and all. But it was not known clearly how the plants are able to prepare the food material. So later it was found by a scientist named as C.B. Van Neel. In 1931 he found the process how the plants were able to make the food and he named it as photosynthesis. So, According to this photosynthesis, the plants are able to convert the carbon dioxide water into carbohydrate. So this was given by this scientist in the form of an equation. So he noticed that for by the formation of each glucose molecule, that is for the formation of one glucose molecule along with the glucose molecule, one water molecule and one oxygen molecule is also produced. So here we see that photosynthesis is a very complex chemical process which takes place in the plants and during the process the product glucose is formed. This is the end product. This is the substance which provide energy. So that material is formed along with this material one molecule of water, one molecule of oxygen is formed for one glucose molecule. So it is given in the form of an equation. So that is carbon dioxide plus water gives rise to oxygen plus water. 
Right, let us see this activity, presence of starch in leaves. So leaves are green in color. We can test the presence of starch with the help of a chemical called as iodine. That means if you have some starch sample, some powdered starch, if you add iodine to that, the color of the starch which is in white, it turns dark blue. So starch when it reacts with iodine, its color changes to dark blue. So we know that leaves contain starch. If we directly pour some iodine on the leaves, will they turn dark blue? No. Why? Does it mean that it is not having starch? Yes, the leaves are having starch. But even then, when you add iodine to the leaf, there is no color change. But when you add iodine to starch, yes, color change. Why? Even though the leaf is having starch, if you directly add some iodine, you cannot notice the color change. So there is a, some procedure by which you can test the presence of starch in the leaves. Let us see, here we have some setup, some apparatus. Let us see what are these apparatus and how to do this activity. So we need to have a beaker with water. So this is a beaker and with some water and we need a tripod tripod and we need asbestos gauze, a wire gauze, a wire gauze and we need a test tube, test tube half filled with ethanol, ethanol is an alcohol. So we need some alcohol in a test tube. So now we need to take a green leaf, the green leaf This is the leaf which we have taken, a green leaf from a plant, just freshly a plucked leaf. So we are thinking that it contains starch. We are going to test whether it contains starch or not. So that leaf has to be collected. So here we have a setup and it is uh, kept above a burner, which is burning. So this is to heat. Now the leaf which we have collected, it is green in color to test with the iodine, first the leaf has to be decolored, means the color of the leaf should be removed. So how can we remove the green color of a leaf? So in this process, we should not remove the starch from the leaf. The leaf should contain the starch, but only the green color should be removed. So for that reason, we are going to boil the leaf in alcohol. So we have taken a test tube and alcohol. Why can't we burn the test tube directly on the flame? Why do we need a beaker again and some water in that? Because if you directly heat the alcohol in the flame, the vapors of the alcohol may catch the fire and the whole thing may blast or catch fire. The whole thing may burn. So it is not advisable to burn this alcohol test tube directly on the flame. It should not be done. So what can we do? We have taken a water bath that is a beaker with water. So in the beaker, we carefully placed a test tube with ethanol and we're going to place this leaf in this beaker. So we are going to boil this content for some time. Depends upon the size of the leaf, type of the leaf. Some leaves, they take 10 minutes. Some leaves, they take 5 minutes. Depends upon. But here you can see that the leaf losing its color into the alcohol. So earlier the alcohol is just like water in plain color without any color. But when you see that the alcohol starts boiling, the leaf slowly leaches. That means it loses its color and the green color is mixed with the alcohol and the alcohol turns green in color. Then you can observe that the leaf, it loses all its color. It looks white or pale in color. Now we can stop, stop the fire. Now take out the leaf. So this is a leaf which we have taken. This is colored green leaf or we can write green leaf. Now this is the decolored leaf. So now this decolored leaf is placed in a petri dish. We can add some water to remove the alcohol. Then add few drops of iodine. If you add few drops of iodine, the leaf turns dark blue in color. So it indicates the presence of starch. 
So by this experiment, we can prove that starch is present in green leaves.